Good evening and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Midland Board of Education on June 25th, 2012. Madam Secretary, would you call roll, please? Yes, President Malt. Here. Vice President Wasserman. Here. Mayor M. here. Treasurer Olley. Here. Member Brandstad. Here. Member Gordon. Here. And Member Clancy. <coughs> here. We have a quorum and thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, uh, everyone's had an opportunity since uh, Cindy sent us out last week to look at this. Is there any changes or deletions or something you want to discuss? If not, we'll move forward. Uh, consent agenda 2.1 is the minutes from the Monday, June 11th meeting. 2.2 is the compliance with the Public Act 335 and the Strategic Plan District School Improvement Committee. 2.3 is the uh, HIVAC maintenance agreement with J.E. Johnson of Midland. Uh, 2.4 is the approval and request to enter into a 12-month compliance agreement with Vanguard Fire and Security. 2.5 is the approval of payment of the school bis bills for the month of May 2012. 2.5A is a uh, breakdown of that. 2.5B is the investment report for the month of May 2012. 2.5C is a listing of purchase orders exceeding $3,000 for the month of May, 2.5D is a list of purchase car transactions exceeding $3,000 for the month of May. Move of approval of consent items 2.1 and 2.5. Support. Moved by Mr. Ole, supported by Mr. Wasserman. If there is nothing further. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor opposed, same sign. Very good. Request to address the board. Uh, we did not receive any formal request. Um, we have a pretty good audience attendance. Some probably uh, are here of their own free will, others are not. Um, and so <laughs> with that, um, we'll close public hearing and um, move on to the presentation of the Board of Education and to Mr. Ellinger. Well, I think all six administrators in the audience are here of their own free will. But <laughs> <laughs> Would they agree they, to that? They, <laughs> they might say otherwise. Um, item 4.1 is just a reminder for our own Board of Education, but just as importantly for our community, that we have an election coming up in November. Recall, we no, lo no longer have May uh, elections for Board of Education seats. Um, statewide, that law has been changed, and so all those elections take part of the uh, part, take take place as part of the general election. The date of the election is Tuesday, November 6, 2012. We have two seats up the, that are available. That would be Mr. Ole and Mr. Malt, uh, each with a four-year term. They have not yet announced their plans for their intent for those four, and that's certainly uh, normal for this time of year. The deadline for candidates to uh, file paperwork is Tuesday, August the 14th, which is really why we're making this announcement tonight. That gives people a couple of months to consider if they have an interest in running for those positions. Where do you file the paperwork? Well, that takes place at the Midland City Clerk's Office at 333 South Ellsworth. So we just wanted to draw that to folks' attention. And with that, we'll move on to uh, why we're uh, all happy to be here tonight, and that's the administrative appointments in 4.2. Uh, these are existing administrators, so they don't take board action, but I have letters of recommendation on two that I'd like to read before the board tonight, and uh, then you can offer your, hopefully, your congratulations to, to these folks. It's uh, my pleasure to inform you of the appointment of Mr. Ted Davis to the position of Assistant Principal Level 1 at H.H. Dow High School. Mr. Davis began his career in 1995 as a biology teacher at Gateway High School in Kissimmee, Florida. From 1996 to 1998, he taught biology and physical education at West Orange High School in Winter Garden, Florida. In 1998, Ted returned to his home state of Indiana to accept a position teaching health at West Noble Middle School in West Noble, Indiana. In 1999, he accepted a physical education and science teaching position at Clinton Perry High School. During his tenure at Clinton Perry, he served as head football coach, assistant basketball coach, and head track coach. In 2005, he was promoted to the assistant principal position at Clinton Perry, where he was responsible for student services, school safety, district transportation, special education, and the evaluation of teaching staff. Mr. Davis earned his undergraduate degree with a major in physical education and minors in biology and health from Franklin College, Franklin, Indiana in 1994. His master's degree in administration and supervision was earned from Ball State University 
in 2006. Mr. Davis has demonstrated uh, through his experiences as the assistant principal level two and this year as the interim assistant principal level one that he has the ability to provide leadership in this position. According to his supervisor, Mrs. Castle, who's in the back of the room here, he has an excellent track record of completing tasks and he has high ethical standards. Mr. Davis has gained the respect from others through his open, honest communications, even when confronting difficult situations. Uh, please be informed that he was identified uh, by the Administrative Personnel Committee as being well qualified for this position. Without a re reservation, I look forward to working with Mr. Davis in this new position. I think Ted um, intended to be here, and look at that. As soon as I think that, he shows up. <laughs> so if you'd like to uh, step up and maybe offer uh, some brief comments to the board, Mr. Davis, that'd be appreciated. Came flying in here a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, to be honest with you, um, I feel very privileged uh, number one, to be part of Midland Public Schools. I always tell a story. Uh, I've had, in, in my career, I've had the ability or I've, I've worked with the fortune uh, to work in the state of Florida, the state of Indiana, and also the state of Michigan, and I've worked at multiple school districts. And this is what I always tell, because part of my job is, I guess, in, the, in this position that I've held for the interim part is, um, you know, is, is to recruit necessarily uh, and bring students in, tell them the truth about uh, Midland Public Schools. And the thing that I'm always, that I always use, that I always tell them, and I say, hey, I don't want you to take this because this is my job or that I work for Midland Public Schools, but I've had the opportunity to work in Florida, in Indiana, in several different districts. And I'll be very honest with you, um, I have two kids that are going to be here or that are in uh, next year will be in sixth and eighth grade, Trevor and Molly, and they will not get a better education in any other district, in any other state that I've ever been in. And so that's really, you know, truly part of how great Midland Public Schools is. I've had that experience. And then the people that I work with at Dow High, I tell you, I, I can't ask for a better boss and she's sitting out here. So, <laughs> and, and just the, 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 the teachers that are at, at Dow High School and I know in Midland Public Schools as well, there isn't a group, and, and once again, I, I fall back on teaching in other areas and other school districts, not a group of individuals that will go above and beyond the way the teachers do at Dow High, the things that Midland Public Schools brings just a great place and I feel very, very fortunate um, to have this position and for me at some point my professional uh, uh, goal is to be a, a building principal and this certainly is a step now learning master schedules and things like that, uh, the staffing piece and, and the next step um, that will help prepare me as I move along professionally over the next few years. So thank you very much and thank you uh, for allowing me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Ted. Congratulations. Uh, we have another number of announcements on administrative uh, reassignments, but the uh, next formal one that I'd like to bring to you is um, um, information of the appointment of Ms. Danielle Rutterbush as the special education supervisor at Midland High School. Ms. Rutterbush started her career as a school psychologist with the Midland County Education Service Agency in September of 2003. She served in that role until June 2008 when she was hired as a school psychologist by the Midland Public Schools that following August. Since that time, she has served as the Special Services Department, uh, she has served the Special Services Department competently. Additionally, she has served teachers and students as a district level learning coach and my Blissey Reading and Behavior Coach. This past year, she worked as the interim assistant principal level two at Dow High School where she learned many skills important to being an administrator. Ms. Rutterbush earned her degree with majors in psychology and human environmental studies at Central Michigan University in May of 2000. She graduated with the honor of summa cum laude. She was awarded the same honor at Miami University in May of 2003, earning her education specialist degree as a school psychologist. In August of 2011, Danielle achieved certification as a state of Michigan, my, bis, my Blissey trainer also. Ms. Rutterbush has repeatedly demonstrated throughout her short career that she serves competently in the best interest of students and is a skilled leader of teachers. 
It is the consensus of the Administrative Personnel Committee that Ms. Rutterbush is highly qualified for this position. It's without re reservation that I recommend Ms. Rutterbush as Supervisor of Special Services at Midland High School. Her appointment will officially begin on July 1, 2012. Danielle, you want to join us? Thank you all so much. I, I'm very grateful for this opportunity. And I wanted to share with you that my grandfather retired from Midland Public Schools as the director of curriculum in 1983. And as I interviewed for this position, I was thinking about the fact that he very likely had interviewed people in the very same room that I had been interviewed in. And that was, um, it, was it was a very meaningful experience to me. And now to have this opportunity to be associated as an administrator with Midland Public Schools is a wonderful opportunity. It means the world to me that I can have this in common with such a great man and with such a respected district. I'm very excited and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. Thank you and congratulations. Just a couple of other announcements and we'll open it up um, with your permission. Um, Mr. Malt, if, if board members want to make comments. Uh, other moves, Shannon Blazy will be appointed as the assistant principal at East Lawn. Uh, Brian Frankovich as the assistant principal at Central Middle School. We have a change in title for Bob Paris from curriculum special, in the curriculum division from curriculum specialist for special education to director of special education. Bob's in the back of the room. Just so you know, you don't confuse him with Penny sitting next to him. <laughs> And Jeff Lauer will take on the added responsibility of supervision for our secondary counseling program. That's the counselors that we have left at the middle school and the high school. And with that, that's the end of our uh, shuffling and chair shuffle for the next year. But I have a lot of confidence in this administrative team. They make our jobs easier, frankly, down here at the administrative center. And it's an astute group to work with that I think <coughs> has taken on major leadership responsibilities in recent years. Uh, given all the changes going on in the district. So I appreciate uh, their hard work and dedication to the students and staff here at MPS. For its pleasure. Well, um, as, as Carl said, it doesn't, it doesn't require any formal action on the board, but I'd like to welcome all of you to the, your new positions. Um, I've become acquainted with uh, the folks at Dow High probably a bit more than at Midland High, but you know, being a chemic, I still have that, that allegiance. And so, uh, but uh, to congratulations to all of you and uh, well deserving, very, very deserving. Thanks for coming out tonight. <laughs> okay, um, moving on to 5.1. Um, actually, uh, administrative services, we have no report, so. Uh, 5.1 to Mr. Ellinger for scholarships. Oh, hang on. Can we get it? Do you recommend for action for the board? I'm sorry. Three? I've jumped ahead a whole it's section. Budget, so. Yeah, yeah. It might be a, an important part of what we need to do tonight. <laughs> sorry. You know, sorry, Linda. Can't it's, avoid the money. Just it's Monday. and then, yeah, yeah, You're right. We can't avoid, uh, avoid the, mon uh, the money issue. So with that, uh, I won't jump ahead so far. We'll go to 4.3 with the uh, final budget adjustments with Mrs. Klein. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah. And it is, uh, we do have two important uh, items on the agenda this evening. First, we adopt the final budget of the current year, and then we'll move into the budget for the 12-13 year. And just a little bit of history here. Some of you have been through this process many, many, many times, and others, this is fairly new. Uh, but this goes back to our first budget that was adopted last year on June 27th. That would be the parallel to the budget that you're about to adopt in a few minutes. It was amended on February 13. And technically, the Uniform Budgeting and Accounting Act doesn't say we have to do a budget adjustment unless revenues are less than estimated or when expenditure priorities change. And we have to ensure that our expenditures do not exceed our revenues and our available fund balance. And you'll see that that's not the case but because we do have money moving across categories or functions, as we call them, uh, we've always done a final budget adjustment, whether it's required or not. Although, historically, at this time of year, we used to only do adjustments to make sure that we had functions that weren't going into the red, because we can't end the year with a function that's overexpended. 
over the years, we've tightened that up. Last year, more so than any. And this year is probably the tightest budget adjustment I know that I've ever done. And as you'll see, we're pretty close to where I think we will end with the audit. Everybody's really worked well with me to try to identify places where they either needed to move money or they had money that they knew they weren't going to spend. And so it comes out of the budget. So what we do for the final process, it's almost like building a brand new budget. Didn't used to be. Used to be we would just sort of look to see where we needed some money and tweaked it a little bit. But now it's really a, almost a brand new process. And in some ways it's more challenging because it's the last shot we get before the audit. And we have to do a lot of estimating. Mo many, many of our teachers choose to spread their pay over 26 pay. So although they started working in September and completed their contractual year in June, they've chosen to be paid through the months of July and August, which count in this current budget year. Those are not part of the 12-13 budget. Uh, but we know what that amount is. Uh, we also know what we will be paying people on the last official pay of this fiscal year on this Friday. We've estimated what we will pay hourly employees for the last week of June. Uh, we have to estimate the remaining medical and dental expenses because those are self-funded. They're not premium-based. Uh, we also have to know what our outstanding purchase card balances are, any monies that have been encumbered but perhaps have not been spent yet, and our utilities. Those are the large areas that require the estimation. And critical is that we have to be certain that our final spending doesn't exceed the amount budgeted, not only in the total but by function. And by function, I mean elementary instruction, middle school, high school, et cetera. Uh, so our process, we also have to look at any gifts or restricted revenue that uh, we had budgeted but doesn't look like it's coming in. That's in function 299, I believe. And so that has been taken out. And any gifts that have been received that will not be spent this year because they are dedicated to that particular purpose have to carry over into the fund balance for next year. And at this time, we've identified at least 45,000 that will have to be restricted for gifts, for basic gifts, and then the very separate area of the fund balance that we show for international baccalaureate will be 600,000. And toward the end, I'll show you what I think the fund balance designations will look like as we close the year. So this year, uh, I will confess, it makes me anxious to bring in a budget that's quite this tight, knowing that I still have a couple more weeks of medical expenses. And I've been tracking everything that's out there. But we are going to have less than 600000 I think, when we get to the audit. And we could actually have less than 400000 And just uh, as a point of perspective, last year, or in June of 2009, uh, we adjusted out one, almost 1 1.8 million, and then still had almost 2 million left when we got to the audit. June 2010, we adjusted out a million and had 1.3 when we got to the audit. Uh, last year, changed the practice, tried to get a really tight number coming out of June, adjusted out uh, almost 2.7 million and only had three quarters of a million left. This year, we're adjusting out about 1.3 and could have 400 left. So to give you a sense of how we've changed some of our internal practices. Uh, but I really feel that when we do complete the year, we should still be in the black. That's what's critical for us, is to not take it so tight that uh, something would happen that we would actually overexpend the budget. Uh, so here's the history of what it's looked like. Final budget is going to be in expenditures, 81 million, 775, uh, down a little bit from, or actually up a little bit from our audited results last year. And I haven't filled in the top part of that chart because we won't know what those numbers are until we complete the audit. But the final as a percent of the original is among well, one of the higher, 98.6%. In 
And my estimates of the audit as a percent of final are probably 99.5, possibly even 99.6% of, of the uh, <coughs> adjustment. And if you see at the bottom, I made a note, less than half a percent. Looks like it'll remain unspent. And I always do like to point out, because it looks very strange that we spent, uh, or our audit was a much higher amount than our original budget. 07, 08 was the year that we had a great deal of interest to repay in a tax appeal. So that's why we had such a large increase in the budget where you could see it's more traditional that as the year goes along, the final budget is smaller than the beginning budget. Uh, so just as a quick review of our original budget and then what happened in February, Revenues increased 3.5%, and the largest share of that was we had the settlement of the MCV taxable value dispute, and so that brought in one-time revenues in excess of a million dollars. We uh, qualified for the best practice categorical. That was a little over 800000 We had about 50 students, more than we had budgeted, and then we had the ICT grant from the MCESA. So really most of the changes in the current year budget were on the revenue side. And on the expenditures, you could see they went up slightly. And most recent budget, we expected a variance uh, that was 2%. The actual variance on expenditures, instead of being 98%, came in, uh, it was 98.3%. Uh, so the uh, estimated shortfall improved over the course of the year. Uh, February to final, revenues are up 1.8%, and I'll go through the details on why and how these numbers have changed. Expenditures down 1.7%, and it looks like the, there, at this point, there's really very little budget variance. You could put four to 600,000 in there, possibly, but uh, the anticipated shortfall is just under 1.8 million. And this is what it would look like without the lease. Because Let me pop back up, and you're wondering, where are all those new revenues from, the 1.8%? Well, that really comes about because of the lease that you approved uh, two or three meetings ago. I think it was back in May for the new photocopiers and the printers. And in the first year of that, and we've gone through this a couple of times, last year we had the telephone equipment. Uh, this year, it's the photocopiers and the printers. That has to be reflected as both revenues and expenses. It doesn't change the bottom line because it's the same amount as a revenue and as an expense, so it gets added in one place and added in another. Uh, but it does, if I take it out of the revenues and expenditures, I think it gives you a little better picture of what the true operating revenues and expenditures are. Uh, so here's the changes on the revenue side. Local down somewhat, and that's primarily, well, the first two bullets address that. It's, we had some taxable value reductions, and that ends up shifting some of our per pupil funding from local to state. And then we also had to reduce our athletic revenue and our pay to participate receipts. Those didn't come in as high as had been budgeted. On the state side, that's primarily the shift in the, the local tax base. Uh, we did have on the federal side quite a few changes. We had EduJobs federal dollars that were allocated, were left over from the prior year, and the state allocated them to all the districts. Our allocation was about $73,000. Uh, we did have in our original budget IDEA, that's Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, flow through federal funds, which we are not going to receive. Those were also about 70,000, so that was really close to a net wash with the edu jobs. We also, at this time of year, always reduce our federal grants to match our expenditures. And those amounts reduced come out of revenues and come out of expenditures, and they end up becoming what's called carryover in 12-13. And then the big increase you see up there in the category of transfers and others was the capital lease for the photocopiers. On the expenditure side, we look at it a couple of different ways. Classroom instruction, that would be those functions for elementary, middle school, high school, special education. 
uh, and career and technical education. Supporting services are pretty much everything else. Community services are actually federal dollars that flow through to our local parochial schools. And then the transfers and others are generally monies that we pay to the MCESA. The largest portion of transfers are um, monies for special education students who are being educated there. Uh, so you can see the changes in each of those categories. The federal funds that are reduced appear in the first three categories, and the capital lease is also primarily in classroom instruction, but also in supporting services. Another way that I like to look at it is by what we call the accounts. And the accounts describe what is purchased, not necessarily what it does. So within elementary instruction, for example, we have a number of accounts that deal with wages. And we have wages across all of the functions. And one thing to t keep in mind is that when we receive gifts, they come out of the other <coughs> category. That's where we've budgeted them. If you want to look at the 12-13 budget, you would see uh, a pretty sizable number in the account for gifts, and if you were to compare it to this final budget, you would see a big zero there. That's because as we spend those gifts, we reduce that account and we put the money wherever it was spent most appropriately. So if it was to purchase elementary classroom supplies, it would go into function 111. Uh, and it would move from other into the supplies category. So wages and salaries. Reduction, uh, it looks like our largest reduction, but as a percent, you have to remember that's also the largest portion of our expenditures. And so wages and salaries ended up being 2.5% um, reduction. Benefits, 4.1%. Purchase services, 10.1 supplies, 9.6% reduction. Uh, capital outlay, that lease increase of 112% there. And then the transfers and the others were down 2%. A little bit of history behind all of them. We have a number of different categories that are considered wages and salaries. That also includes things that you may not think of traditionally as wages, the retirement stipends that many of our staff qualify for if they notify us in a timely manner. And then we do still have some substitute teachers who are not contracted, and their wages are as part of this. And there's a lot of reasons why money may be left over, uh, vacancies that occur mid-year. We now have a teacher's contract that allows teachers to retire at times other than the end of the year. In this particular year, we had three people who took advantage <coughs> of that for a variety of reasons and ended up retiring mid-year. And depending on when it is, their position may be filled with a substitute rather than with a new hire. Uh, and we, we certainly saw that happen. And I love it when we make administrative hires on Jul before July 1. That's just a beautiful thing because it doesn't mess with the budget. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, we end up sometimes having to prorate what's, what's there. Uh, and here's how it breaks down. The teachers and special services staff, 594,000. And again, uh, that may seem like a large number, but it's actually less than 2% of that total. So there were some other areas that had larger reductions. Unused retirement stipends, that was a, a pretty sizable reduction. We're still feeling the effects of the retirement incentive that the state offered two years ago. And we just are not seeing the number of retirees. I think that's probably going to bounce back. But when HR is pretty cautious about their budgeting, and they don't like to be caught short. And uh, so this year, they had plenty of money left there. Uh, as a result of the administrative realignment, there was some money that could come out of one of the functions. We had some vacant technology positions that were either were not filled at all or were filled later than I had anticipated even when I brought you the mid-year budget. And of course, we had money coming out of federal programs and wages, and athletic wages were down somewhat. And there's smaller areas, if you were to add all those up, 
uh, they probably wouldn't hit exactly that number, but that was the number that the wages were reduced. Those are just the major areas. On the benefits, benefits are all of what you would probably recognize as traditional benefits, all the insurances, but also the payroll taxes for retirement, Social Security, Medicare, workers' comp, and unemployment. And we are self-funded for medical, dental, and workers' comp. So a little harder to estimate those areas because they, are, they fluctuate. They're not premium-based. Our major areas here, uh, medical reduction is, this is one of the smaller reductions that I've brought you the last couple of years. And you need to know that within that reduction of 625000 our pharmacy rebates, we changed to a new pharmacy company last year. And this is something that I might change going forward. I noticed if, as I reflected back on the year, we had pharmacy, re our total rebates of a little over 200000 And when I dug into them, I realized these weren't stop loss recoveries. These are pharmacy rebates. And so I may start building those into the uh, future budget as a bit of a reduction because $200,000 is a, a significant amount, and that appeared to be what most of the rebates were. We had no stop loss recoveries this year. Uh, then we have all the benefits that are tied to payroll because they are a percent of that, life, dis disability, accident insurances, payroll taxes. So as salaries and wages go down, you would expect these to go down. Uh, dental and vision, we began self-funding our dental in September, and it's turned out to be a very good move for us. And most of that reduction came from dental. And I already knew what it was looking like from our dental company going into next year's budget. So I think next year's budget actually reduced the dental rates by 10%. So that's one that carries forward. And then workers' comp uh, ended up with a reduction as well. All of the other areas were up, but of course the capital lease is the largest part of that. Everything else really was down. The utilities, I'd love to say, was a result of skill, but you probably all have your own utility bills to show for it. It was an easy winner. And so we can't expect that to happen, but it really uh, worked in our favor. It was a light winner, and we didn't use nearly the amount of natural gas that we sometimes have. Technology had some projects that were del uh, delayed or deferred, as well as they had a significant cost reduction on the Microsoft license that came through the ESA that they learned about fairly late in the year. So that's money that I think is back in next year's budget. Uh, all of our board accounts, legal, elections, et cetera, looks like that's what will be unspent. Fuel, diesel for the buses able to reduce there. And then again, there's federal programs, but that will be carried over. So all together, we adjusted 774 accounts. It truly was like building a brand new budget at this time of year. 227 actually went up, 547 were decreased. And of those, 269 accounts had reductions of less than $500. So people really did a good job of looking at their budgets and trying to forecast what they didn't need to spend by the end of the year. And there was a time when the $500 just wouldn't have been on anybody's radar screen, but I think we've done it a couple of years now and everybody understands that if you're not going to spend it, let us know. We need to take it out because we need to have a good picture of where we are when we end the year. Uh, fund balance. There it was on June 30th, 2011, and that's as it was reported in the audit. Then the next column over is what I think it will look like, fairly close. Uh, it is going to be smaller. The amount that we think we will have in inventory and pre uh, prepaid expenditures is down. Because we are self-funding dental, we no longer have the premium stabilization fund. The amount reserved for the International Baccalaureate gift will be higher. Uh, looks like contributions will be slightly lower than they were last year. Uh, we continue to not put away money for a PRME allocation. We've done that for the last two or three years. 
The money that we had set aside last year for the tax appeals was unneeded, so that comes out. The assignments for the current year excess expenditures is the amount that's in the 12-13 budget if we had to expend 100%. 10% of projected medical is a little lower because I project next year's medical expenses to be lower. Uh, we have the medical and workers comp, IBNR, those are estimates of our figures. We get those uh, through working with our medical and workers comp carriers later in July. And that leaves us in the cash flow management area just under $3 million. So we think the spendable will drop from 13 975 786 to 12 368 and Depending on where the bills come in the next couple of weeks, that 12769 could be slightly higher, but not, uh, it, it, we're not going to be increasing fund balance unless somebody walks in this week and gives us revenue that we're not expecting. Uh, so here's what the changes to fund balance have looked like over the years. It's an interesting graph. I think it tells quite a story of the history of the last few years. Uh, and so you can see that going back to the 99-2000 uh, year, we will have taken money out of fund balance one, two, three, four, five, six times, roughly half the time. And our dips have been some pretty big dips. And we had a couple of years, the 0102 and the 0203 years where we put money in. And after that, it's been spottier. And we haven't had uh, years like that. Of course, you know the whole history of what's happened with revenues and 20J funding, et cetera. So if we look ahead and compare this year with next year, revenues will be down, no question about it. And that number, I have to say, I looked at this and said, what are we doing that revenues are down $4 million? You have to go back to one of those earlier slides and remember this year we had a million dollars of MCV money, over 800,000, well the difference between next year's best practice and this year's best practice is over 400,000, so that's 1.4. We have a capital lease of 1.6, that's 3 million. Uh, enrollment decline of over 900,000 and edgy jobs of 73,000. Uh, so it doesn't take too long to get to that 4.3. Expenditures, on the other hand, with everything that we've done, are going to be less than a million dollar increase. And the expected variance would mean that next year we'll probably need about 4 million of that 12.7, leaving us roughly 8 million. So that's our forecast right now for the final budget for 2011-12. Thank you, Linda. Questions or comments? I think everybody sort of anticipated. I move approval of the budget adjustments as presented. Second. Wait. Moved by Mr. Oley, supported by Mrs. Branstad. Any comments? Yeah, I just had one comment is I think that at the beginning of the year, your projected number for the fund equity general fund balance was like about a little over 12 million. And if you go back a couple of slides as far as, it, it, and it just shows the discipline that this year with, with the budget, and I applaud that coming out close, beginning of the year or projected compared to where we are. We still have a few more days to go, but um, I just appreciate the, the discipline and looking at the numbers and everybody in the district um, being really close to watching the accounts too. I think it's improved the predictability because there has been some sensitivity to that. You know, what, what do we predict at the beginning of the year to the end? And, you know, I think that that's definitely helping to build some uh, unity in the district. And yeah. Although just very good I, to see. I don't think any of us deserve the credit for the million dollars that came in from MCV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right there yeah. helped quite a bit. Yeah. But you're right. It, it, it still is still a long way from there to where we are. Between those and numbers. Very much appreciated. Everybody so. is extremely cognizant whenever they spend money. Yep. yep. Anybody else? I'd just like to say that uh, the changes that we've made, um, I think, are, uh, as John's alluded to, to some degree, uh, 
a positive thing for the district and how we move that forward. Okay, let me take it back. I, one of these I think is just so telling. When you look back to 2006-7 and see, or even 7-8, and see that our expenditures were approaching 90 million and they're down in 81, 82. Right. We've done a lot of hard work. Yeah. Very good. We have a motion on the table with support. Any further discussion or comment? If not, all those in favor of the motion on the table signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have a motion and support for the amended final budget adjustment. With that, we'll move on to 4.4, .4, as I did not jump to 5 yet, um, to the operating budget uh, with Mr. Ellinger. Just uh, one final wrap-up on uh, Linda's hard work on the amended budget. Really, unless you have the office next door to hers, you have no idea how <laughs> consumed she has been, really, since late May in, in working on this amended budget. and. Um, she would be embarrassed if I share this, but I'll share it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> After this meeting, now that that's been amended, and then we, we of course, have to adopt the uh, next year's budget in, the, in our next item here, she said, Carol, I can begin getting caught up later this week, and by early next week, with any luck, be caught up. So much goes on the back burner when this is their focus, preparing this for all of you. So thank you. Great work done, and very dependable work, I might say, also. Um, the operating budget for 12 and 13 by state law, superintendents have to recommend this to you. We presented it um, publicly uh, two weeks ago, held a public hearing. Um, we have not received any comments uh, from the public on it. Uh, Linda and I had an opportunity actually to um, talk to the chamber last Monday, a week ago. Uh, we talked about uh, the uh, amended budget and next year's budget in front of their governmental relations committee. We probably had... 25 people, something like that, a couple dozen, maybe 30 in the room. They ask good questions, of course. Um, they're very astute people tracking governmental issues. So uh, that was a so-called another public hearing of it. We talked about other accomplishments of the district, too, but they were curious about some budgetary items that we got into some detail in. And then um, I have the opportunity to speak to Rotary this Thursday on the accomplishments of the district. and. Of course, the expectation is that I'll talk about the implications of the teacher contract that we settled for the next two years, although that's going to be a small part of what I do on Thursday. But there'll be more public knowledge of the budget at that point in time as well. Um, as part of the um, adoption of the budget, should that be uh, the direction you head um, this evening, uh, Linda is going to review with you, I think, uh, once again, the millage rates because that's required to be part of your, uh, to be stated publicly as part of your resolution in adopting uh, next year's budget. A um, couple of you have emailed us questions since the packet went out for this meeting. We appreciate getting those ahead of time. Um, Angela devoted a lot of time to that and, and asked some very detailed questions and uh, Linda dug into that and provided those answers. But if you have other questions about next year's budget, please feel free to uh, ask them before you would adopt it for next year. Of course, by law, we have to adopt the following year's budget by June 30th um, of the current year. And uh, with that, I'll ask Linda to review what she needs to Thank with you. you. Yes, in addition to the actual appropriation of dollars, and you just saw the slides with the amounts on the revenues and expenditures, uh, we are required to make sure that we're very public about the tax rates that are necessary to support that. Although, as you know, the under Proposal A, we're our taxing authority is a little different. Uh, but we would expect that the millage rates, 2012 millage rates, to support the 12-13 general fund expenditures are 18 mills on non-homestead property, uh, 1.9344 mills on principal residence, qualified agricultural, qualified forest, industrial personal, and commercial, commercial personal property. That is the estimate based on taxable values today when our county does the final update of the tax roll for this coming year, I will recalculate that figure and come to you probably the end of August or September with the rate. You may remember that's the one that we had to do twice last fall because we had quite a change in a short period of time. Uh, and in addition, commercial 
property, commercial personal property is taxed six mills in addition to that, not that homestead rate. So they will actually be paying 7.93 for four mills. And everyone pays the six mills for the state education tax, but that is not our levy. That is levied on all the properties in the cities and townships on behalf of the state of Michigan. And I would just remind you, again, just because it's a great document for reference, the uh, letter that we handed out on the Midland Public Schools operating budget for 12-13 really talks about those millage rates, and it's a great uh, way to learn about school budgets. That's not an easy thing to do. So you have that as a resource to you uh, for the whole next year in case you need that. With that, I'll move approval of the 2012-2013 operating budget. Support. Moved by Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Ole, supported by Mr. Wasserman. Any questions or comments? If not, we have the motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We have next year's budget. Very good. That's a relief. Feel free to take a week or two off before you start thinking <laughs> about next year's budget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, you know, a nice ride on your boat, Linda, would be good. So moving on now to 5.1 with Mr. Allinger, there, as I said earlier, there is no administrative service report um, with scholarships, Mr. Allinger. Uh, yes, if you recall from our meeting two weeks ago, I think our graduating seniors, if they use their scholarship money each year for the next four years, I think the total of that was 13.2 million between the two high schools, which is really incredible. And so for those that are scholarships that are annual, uh, we like to bring to you and read publicly so those folks that donated those scholarships as well as the winners can have some public acknowledgement of that on TV for really the next month. And so the Joe Blazy Scholarship was awarded to Alex Brown, who is a 10th grade student at H.H. Dow High School, and to Jessica Babcock, an 8th grade student at Central Middle School. The CB and Anita Branch Scholarship awarded to Zachary Pennington, a 12th grade student at Midland High School, and to Daniel Zhao, a 12th grade student at H.H. Dow. The Chester L. and Blanche C. Cohn Scholarship is awarded to Jessica Winslow, 12th grade student at Midland High. The William Collison Scholarship is awarded to Cody Miller, a 12th grade student at Midland High. The Carl Ingweiss Scholarship awarded to Scott St. Louis, a 12th grade student at Midland High. The Brent Frank Scholarship awarded to Samuel Owens, a 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High School. The Grand Rapids Building Services uh, Award is given to Leah Eisler, a 12th grade student at Midland High School, and to Arjun Shala, a 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High. The Paula K. Kellen Scholarship is awarded to Kaylee Quimby, 12th grade student at Midland High. The James Kiernan Scholarship is awarded to Samantha Rice, an eighth grade student at Northeast Middle School, and to Alex or Alexis Hammond, a seventh grade student at Northeast Middle School. The Lindsay, the Lindsay Shield Scholarship is awarded to Maura McAfee, twelfth grade student at Midland High. The Malin H. Moore Scholarship is awarded to David Green, a twelfth grade student at Midland High School. The David C. Morrison Scholarship is awarded to Callie Whiteman, 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High, and to Rebecca Ross, a 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High. The Tony O'Hara Scholarship is awarded to Conrad Lather, 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High. The George and Shirley Owen Scholarship is awarded to Grace Kendall, 12th grade student at Midland High School. The Thomas Roger Roberts Scholarship is awarded to Sean Cushman, a 12th grade student at H.H. Dow High School. The Tom Stern Scholarship is awarded to Carl Hoffman, 12th grade student at Midland High. The Charles Trzinski Scholarship is awarded to Sarah Baker, uh, our one and own Sarah Baker here at the table, 12th grade student at Midland High School. The Stephen uh, Zuzula Scholarship is awarded to Mackenzie Lowerson, 12th, 10th grade student at H.H. Dow High School. The H.H. Dow High School Student Council Scholarships are awarded to seniors, Jennifer Presidents, Christian D. Smith, Jessica O., and Megan Dambro. The Midland High School Student Council Scholarships are awarded to seniors, Carl Hoffman, Leah Eisler, Kaylee Quimby, and Zachary Walters. 
And the Roy L. McNeil Scholarship is awarded to Lucas Hotchkitch, Hotchkiss, pardon me, 12th grade student at H.H. H. Dow High School, and to Elizabeth Wolford, a 12th grade student at H.H. H. Dow High. The Midland High School Business Education Scholarship is awarded to Jasmine Sodu, the 12th grade student at Midland High School. And the William Dixon Scholarship is awarded to Riley Andridge, a 12th grade student at Midland High School. Zachary Pointer, a 12th grade student at Midland High School. And to Michael Housen, a 12th grade student at H.H. H. Dow High School. Our congratulations go out to all the award winners. Um, we couldn't be more proud of you, and we hope you uh, put your scholarships to good use. Quite an impressive list of young people from both high schools. And as Carl alluded to, the amount of this year's scholarships from both high schools was just amazing. With that, we'll move. Uh, we have no FFO report. And we we'll move to Mrs. Klein for uh, information on gifts. Yes. Uh, we have gifts totaling $2,481.52. And as you will see in the listing for almost every one, they are deferred to next year because at this point it's too late in the year for us to be able to make the expenditures that were intended. The first is from Ruth Ann Wright, support for the cognitively impaired classroom at Chestnut Hill. The Rollin M. Gerstacker Foundation also provided matching funds for that. Carpenter Street School PTO renewed the online subscription for Accelerated Reader and Star Reading programs. And the National Energy Foundation uh, provided a grant for classroom supplies for fourth grade classes at Plymouth. We also have two gifts that require your acceptance. They total $55,000, and they will also be deferred to 12-13. The first is from the Rollin M. Gerstacker Foundation, and it is the first half of a $100,000 grant for the Midland High School International Exchange Program with Taipei, Taiwan. And given the size of this, I suspect that we will probably be setting up a separate restriction in the fund balance because we will want to be able to track that separately from, from everything else. Uh, then we have the Midland County Youth Action Council at the Midland Area Community Foundation, which has contributed toward the installation of a sound field system for East Lawn. And you've seen a number of gifts over the course of the spring. The principal was very aggressive in pursuing grants and was quite successful in, in funding her project. I think there's still some left out there that she would like to fund, but this will do a number of classrooms. Very good. It's a pleasure. More approval. Mark, say something. Somebody needs to say something. That's a lot of money sitting there. I was waiting. Okay, Mr. Orley uh, moved approval, and Mr. or Dr. Kaminsky yep. is, is in support. So, with that, I bring t I call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. I can't imagine anybody turning fifty-five thousand dollars away. And so we have our motion for our gifts. So thank you very much. Human resources, we did not have a committee report. And so with that, uh, who's taking Mr. Verlindy? Mrs. Klein again. I will put on my Mr. Verlindy hat. OK, thank you. Uh, we have two staff members announcing their retirements. We have Debbie Breesbo, a paraprofessional at Carpenter Elementary, effective on June 14 and Opal Chambers, a paraprofessional at Chestnut Hill, June 6th. Thank you. 8.1 is letters, uh, and 8.2 are, um, are letters to inform the court, um, Board of Education, as well as a FOIA request uh, under the Freedom of, Freedom of Information Act. Um, we have just one meeting as a reminder to the entire board on July 16th. You've received a communication on, from Cindy on that. And so please, if you haven't already, uh, please re uh, respond in kind. And the regularly scheduled meetings for the remainder of the 2012 calendar year. year. So with that, I will turn uh, things over on study discussion with to Mr. Ole to my right. And a couple of quick things. Um, congratulations, obviously, to all the students on their wonderful scholarships. 
also wanted to, to thank, you, thank you to all the individuals and families responsible for funding those scholarships over the years. And some of these have been around for a long time. Some are relatively new. Some names are recognized from people that used to work here. And um, it's really nice. I mean, the kids won't have the opportunity to get those scholarships unless people have not funded them make this possible. So thank you to those as well as the, the gifts that we just uh, approved. So I want to congratulate all the administrators. Um, you know, I, I honestly think that our administrative team are probably the unsung heroes of our district. They probably get the least amount of attention and discussion by us up here, and yet they do a phenomenal job on a day in, out, day out basis. And, and the people that have gotten new roles that we were announced tonight, um, they joined a very uh, impressive group of, of leaders that we've had for a long period of time, quite frankly. And I, I, think, I think we've taken for granted. I think this district prides itself in outstanding achievement in a lot of areas. And uh, there's a lot of people who deserve credit for that, but our administrators are right on that list as well um, for their leadership. And along with uh, the thank you to, to Linda, obviously, especially for her budget preparation leadership, um, um, that seems to be a year-round kind of activity now. Um, we've got people who are outstanding leaders, and they all are. But as part of being outstanding leaders, you have to be outstanding managers, if you will. And we've got a lot of people who manage this district, manage the expenses, manage the budget on a day and out basis. And it's probably something we take for granted as well. And every year we expect, is it 99%, 98, 97? And uh, when you think about, and she ta pointed out, the millions of dollars of less expenses we're spending over the last 10 years, you would think it'd become tougher and tougher to still manage underneath that. And yet we do it, and we do it year in and year out. So I just wanted to thank all of you and all of your colleagues on a day and basis who, who lead but also manage really, really well. And uh, we should never take that for granted because it's uh, um, something we're very fortunate to have in our district. So that's all I got. Well, that's quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else is left to say. <laughs> so um, just thank you, Linda, for answering all my budget questions that I had. I did have a chance on Friday to look through it. Being new, I thought it might be good for me to try to really understand it. And um, congratulations to all the scholarship winners. And I know there were many, many more than just what's listed here who this year received scholarships. And that's so wonderful, given I just got an update today from the University of Michigan on how much tuition is. And comparing that versus what I paid several years ago, it, it is a little overwhelming. So it's wonderful that um, we have so many scholarships to help kids pursue um, education beyond high school. And um, also, this um, new grant for this program in Taiwan sounds wonderful, and I hope that a lot of children will apply for that and take advantage of that. What a wonderful opportunity. That would be all. Well, I'd just like to offer my congratulations and very best wishes also to all of the scholarship winners um, and also to the folks who are here tonight on their promotion. And then I'd also like to echo what Mr. Oli says. Uh, in appreciation of the administration because the leaders always set the tone for the rest of the organization. And I think we're very fortunate to have leaders who set a, a tone of um, very, very high standards um, and hard work, and it certainly pays off. We always see that. We always say that, and it's always true. We, we do see that. The proof is always in the pudding, and we always see it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Lynn. Oh, that's me. I, would, I too would say thanks, our uh, congratulations to Ted and Danielle and all the others. And I think Ted said it well tonight when he said he's been in other states and in other districts and how proud, truly proud we can be in, in Midland here. And uh, we know it, but it's always nice to hear it from someone that has had that experience somewhere else. Um, and I, I would too would congratulate the scholarship winners. And um, I know personally we were very pleased and Sarah was very pleased. And what a nice program too in these these students are, uh, receive this, these awards. We have already sent ours in, so <laughs> it'll take a little, little teeny way, bite, little tiny bite out of that Michigan State uh, tuition. <laughs> uh, and on the Taipei, uh, the Roland Gerstacker Foundation grant for the Taipei Taiwan uh, Exchange Program, that is just so exciting. And I know that was a lot of hard work by. Um, I believe it was uh, Carol Neff and Amy Hutchison yeah. and Janet Greif. So that, that will just be an incredible opportunity, as, as we've said. And uh, it'll be exciting to hear how all that works out. And uh, congratulations to a lot of our girls soccer players. I was catching, I was gone last week, so I've been catching up in the newspaper and, and uh, quite a list of our gals and, uh, that made the dream teams in the the team's uh, recognitions in the Saginaw Valley here. And uh, Gary Strickler was the coach of the year. So uh, on that note, everybody enjoy the rest of the summer.
real quickly, I'll go back to one of Carl's first comments. Um, it's only a month and a half or so before um, elections close for people running for board. And I would encourage anybody who's listening, if you have any inkling, you've been involved in the schools before particularly, feel free to call any board member uh, to talk to us about what service means, uh, et cetera. I encourage people to, uh, to take on that task. It's, uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult, but other times very rewarding. And uh, graduation is a very rewarding night. That's when it all comes back for you. And so, um, anyway, just wanted to put a public shout out to folks to consider it and feel free to call me or any other board member to discuss what it means to be on the Board of Education if you're considering it. Um, you know, with going over the budget today, I think it's definitely is, a, um, is good to, to see how much work went into that. And I appreciate the Linda, all the, the time you put in. And thanks to everybody in the district to um, have, you know, communicate with you have uh, have the amounts watched and the accounts and so forth. So I think it does give us uh, a little bit of breath of fresh air as as the planning has to be tighter and get scrutinized more that that came in as good as it did. I think it means a lot to the unity in the district. Um, congratulations to those receiving the appointments of administrators. They take on quite a, mo a large amount of responsibility and they are, like Yvonne, like you said, they are our leaders and they, they definitely do set a lot of the tone in the buildings that they're with and mentor kids and um, the direction that they go or to keep them out of directions that they potentially could go. Um, the $47,000, over $47,000 in gifts tonight is very well appreciated. I wonder what that list is getting to. I know each year it gets into the several uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, I know we, usually we do get a tally at the end of the year and I'm just so blessed and grateful to have the community be as giving as it is uh, to MPS and it's just really amazing to see how generous this community is. Um, and uh, congratulations to the scholarship winners. Um, it's, it's really great to see the, the kids uh, having that much um, notoriety. And they're uh, hopefully resting for the summer, and they're going to be gearing up. I know the checkbooks are gearing up, it sounds like, uh, for some of those tuition bills. And uh, car insurance for now, uh, but uh, you know, tuition for later. And um, so uh, but that's all I have. Thank you, and uh, as usual, uh, well said. Uh, I'd like to first start off by saying to Carl and to the entire administrative team that's across the district, all the principals, all the assistants, all the department heads, everybody that uh, this was, a, you know, just did an outstanding job this year. I uh, really like the changes that we've made in the uh, budget process with respect to uh, making sure that we're, uh, understand that we're a little closer at the end, but it uh, was a good process, and I think that, as John alluded to, we, can, we appreciate that. Um, it, and I want to say thank you to all of you for my in my absence last uh, board meeting and to Jerry specifically with respect to uh, running the show without any any hiccups and I didn't expect there would be uh, it was what the second time in eight years and so not uh, I did miss it but uh, had the, another engagement that I had to be at um, to the cabinet luncheon um, if you a number of us were there and it was a wonderful uh, event and uh, well appreciative of the of all those that were attendants including some of the retirees that were there that that uh, we got to see that we haven't seen in a couple of years and uh, that was a nice event for those of us so <coughs> excuse me that were able to uh, attend um, to all of you uh, what an outstanding year uh, as my peers on this board and I'm very appreciative of all the things that um, you have all been willing to do, and that's uh, be at many meetings, FFO, HR, um, administrative services, uh, CASA, um, a lot of work. And uh, with a new budget that uh, we just adopted for next year and the culmination of last year's uh, um, final adjustment, um, we can hopefully put the rest of this behind us for this, this school year, but what an outstanding year, and thank you all for your perseverance and, and, and dedication to the board uh, because uh, it's like Jerry said you know the announcements out that we have we have two positions that will uh, uh, be up for election in November um, and uh, m my comment would be to challenge the community to have some folks step up um, so to speak and I don't like to do that too often but um, we have a very talented community and uh, we have a great uh, resource in middle and public schools and so it's uh, it would be nice to see some more interest out there uh, not unlike what we've had in the last couple of years with John and Yvonne and 
uh, Angela and, and their, uh, their willingness to step forward. Uh, it's a big responsibility, uh, has its good points and its bad points. <laughs> um, but uh, the bottom line is, is that at the, in the end, it's a, it's a wonderful experience and it's all in the best interest of students from Midland Public. So with that, um, like I said, we, have a, we only have one meeting in July. You all, again, received uh, uh, correspondence to, with regard to that. Um, congratulations to our appointees this evening. Enjoy your summer. Take a little time away. Uh, get some R&R. &R. Go for a boat ride, Linda. Um, but yes, uh, thank you again, Paul, for being uh, so so good at what you do. Um, two things. Uh, John was right. We um, we have a gift total. Uh, th just take a minute and, and get a gift total in your mind of what you think it is. Um, each of you as board members for this entire year. And now I'll tell you that it amounts in total to three hundred and seventy-six thousand nine hundred and forty-one dollars and eighty-four cents. So Rick is shaking his head. He's the veteran board member here, and he had it nailed right down to the cent, I'm uh, sure. I was, I was within 10. <laughs> thousand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is an incredible amount of, uh, of um, generosity, uh, charitability, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I also think it's a vote of confidence in all of you as a board of education and the guidance you give to uh, running this district. So that's pretty incredible. So is this. Eric uh, Albrecht, uh, Albright, who is our um, athletic director of Midland High School, stopped by my office today. And, of course, um, he's a baseball fan. We all know that. He's our varsity baseball coach. And I don't know if he was challenged by the Saginaw Valley League or if he did this of his own volition. But he went out and, I think along with some others, went into what he called the bowels of the trophies um, <laughs> at Midland High <laughs> and discovered the very first Saginaw Valley League. And on this side, it actually uses the words baseball as two separate words. And if you, any of you who are baseball historians know that baseball has not always been one word. And this is a trophy that dates back um, <laughs> 107 years, and it's inscribed with the very first 1905 Saginaw Valley League um, uh, winner, and that was Flint. And it goes from 1905 to 1968 with some lost years, um, uh, we think, around the First World War. And so he is going to do some research. He found the cup. He had it cleaned up. They had it mounted on this, and there is room elsewhere on the cup, much like the Stanley Cup, where you can inscribe the rest of the winners from 1968 through 2012. That's neat. And I think his team actually won it um, this year, so this is the rightful home of it, even though it's been with us for Lord knows how long. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> He is, uh, he is quite proud of this, and I asked him if he would come and talk about it with you and our community tonight. And um, <laughs> actually, Alex uh, Rapanos is playing in the state all-star uh, game tonight, yeah. and so he was attending that to uh, show his support, of course, as we cool. might expect. So I will leave this here, and you are all um, welcome to look at it, but not very often do you get to hold a trophy that has uh, 107 years of history, yeah. which is very, very cool. So... Uh, on that note, you know what, we say we always want to end our board meetings with a focus on students. I think this does it for probably a long period of time, <laughs> longer period of that's time than we've ever had the opportunity to do. Oh my gosh. So that's Pretty what I would neat. offer. Oh, wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, we'll take a motion. Oops, sorry, go ahead. Has anybody reported that missing? <laughs> <laughs> is, is there police reports going no, back? I, I, you know, at, at, I don't know. I'm uh, not quite there yet. Um, <laughs> it wouldn't have been reported here. <laughs> <laughs> I will entertain a motion if there's nothing further to adjourn. So move. Moved by, moved by Mr. or Dr. Kaminsky, supported by Mr. Washington. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Stand adjourned. Aye.